But after that Lakers series, you guys obviously advance. Was there any temptation in your mind to just like maybe go back to the old Lakers team group text and just like like one random message? I wanted to step foot in the locker room. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Out of Pocket, the Hoop Show for Real Hoop Fans, presented by Pepperoni. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Josiah Johnson. I'm Zach Schwartz. We got a very special guest today, NBA champion Thomas Bryant. Thomas, thank you for tapping in with us. You're having the best summer, I would imagine, you've probably ever had in your NBA career. Tell us what it's like. Are you are most of the days, you know, a little bit of a hangover? Like what 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 how have you been enjoying this very special summer so far? No, I've been I've been enjoying the summer a lot. You know, uh, going into the summer, knowing that your team won a championship, it gives you know you have a new sense of life. Sometimes you know, going into yeah. the summer, yeah. But uh, for me, it was just like you know a few days of hanging with the guys and everything. But after that, it was it was back to regular life for me. Going back you know, to get my body right, training a little bit more and more and everything. You know, I just can't sit around because I I su- I just suddenly just get bored with myself. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> So obviously you got to enjoy the parade and mm-hmm. give us, give us some of the kind of like highlights from that. Like, well, well I mean, first I want to know you win the title, you walk to the locker room, you're celebrating. Who was, who was the most famous person you got a text congratulating you after you guys won the title? Wow. Uh, I I don't really know. That's a, that's a really tough question. I I'm think sure a, there are a million. It was like that. But for me, the, yeah. The most exciting ones that I got with her were from like the people that that were from home. Yeah. You know, uh the ones the day one fan the day one friends that I had that were just very happy for me, you know, FaceTime calls from them and you know, uh talking to my mom and my brother and everything like that. Those are the things that really meant the most to me because it wasn't just about just me winning it. It was just like just shedding life for my people and myself as well, but also for the people of, you know, the upstate New York area right there. So it was just all for love for them because they always gave me motivation to go out there and play no matter if I played or sat a game or anything like that. You know, it was always just genuine love. What was the text number at when you got back to your phone? Like how many messages were sitting there for you? I had like... 20 on text and I had like about almost 200 that I needed to see after. <laughs> That's awesome. And it was crazy because it was all individuals. It was barely any group chats. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So we've all seen the videos from the locker room, the championship parade, and y'all were getting super turned up. I mean, I seen Aaron Gordon on the street rocking out with fans, shirtless and all that good stuff. <laughs> but I want to know who's the wildest Nuggets player or coach when they're lit? Wildest Nuggets player or coach? The wildest one that I've seen probably would be Mike Malone when he was at the parade. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Malone was crazy. He was he was gone. But I love coach. I love. What's that like for you seeing your head coach out there? He getting more turned up than the players are with the chip. And I was different, but it was just like, hey, turn up, coach. Shoot, <laughs> you just want a chip. Like, hey, man, hey, hey, celebrate it, man. And then I would say player. You know the crazy thing is we don't have too many guys on the team that drink too much. That's what it felt like. Like like y'all were just y'all super focused, locked in, not a lot of party yeah, animals. It was, yeah, it was like not too many party animals or anything like that. It was just guys that just enjoyed, you know, hanging out with each other, enjoy the moment, but like nobody was like really actually like a like a really wild drinker. Aaron Gordon said he was off those modellos, you know what I'm saying? He said he was a little cooked, you know what I mean? But <laughs> other than that, you know what I'm saying? Didn't see too much, but uh, we all saw Joker's reaction uh, when he realized that he was expected to stay for the parade. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And then he expressed at the parade, it's like the best day of my life. He loves for the parade. You know what I mean? How distraught was Joker for real? Like, you know, prior to the parade, was did he really prefer to go home? Yes. <laughs> Man, really. <laughs> When he said his speech, he really thought, like, hey, I'm going home, dog. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> it, for me, personally, watching the way that he's was just steamrolling defense after defense, you know, it kind of all made sense that, like, oh, he's he's trying to get through these series and cook these teams as quickly as he can because he really does want to go home. Did that Was that something you guys kind of laughed about? Like, oh, he's he's like putting in these crazy performances because at the end of the day, he knows he wants to get back, watch his horse racing, enjoy life back at home. 
Is that something you guys kind of joked about going in, going through the series, like internally? No, not really at all. Okay. Like really through everything. It was just a matter of just stay, stay, staying on task, staying on course of the task at hand. You know, yeah. that was all, that was everybody's mindset going throughout the whole playoff run. You know, it wasn't about like, you know, get through this so we can get to that or this or that. It was just always one step at a time, one series at a time, one game at a time. Yeah, man, it's only been a few weeks, obviously, since you guys have won that chip. But what does it feel like for you? As a kid, you dream about winning the championship. Very few get to actually really experience what that's like. So what was it like for you just winning the chip and now being an NBA champion for the rest of your life? You know, it was an absolute blessing. You know, it, you know, as a kid, you always dream about winning an NBA championship. And, you know, you always dreamed about it, always talked about it. But, you know, you you know, a lot of times you never thought you'd be in a position to be with a team to win a championship. So, you know, throughout that whole course, especially in the finals, I actually had to take a moment to just say thank you because it was it was literally like my first time ever in the playoffs. And also do like, mm. getting this far in the playoffs to the finals and then winning one with a team like that, like, that was special. That was really special for me. So there were reports during the season. Obviously, we're, we're a pro Laker podcast. We let you know about that before the show started. <laughs> yeah. but we, we always support people getting their bags, people going to better opportunities. We are not haters. We are very rational. We're the very rational side of that exactly. fandom. But So there were reports that you re- requested a trade from the Lakers before the deadline. You end up in Denver. So what's it like for you making that tri- transition from the Lakers locker room to the Nuggets locker room? And I want to know what makes that Nuggets team so special. What, what What is it about that team that was able to just have that championship DNA and to go out there and get the job done? You know, throughout that time, it it was kind of crazy how it, start, how it happened because, you know, for me, throughout the start of, like, that time right there, I never, like, I never went in there and said to Rob, like, I requested a trade. Like, I request this or that. Like, that was never, that was never the point at hand. You know, for me, it was just like, why would, why would people think that? Because of how highly I spoke about the team, how highly I spoke about AD, Bra, coach, and everything. Like, I love genuinely playing with those guys. Like, I I came with the time where I grew up watching Kobe and Bra. So it's like, you know, those were my favorite guys that I looked up to. I loved watching those guys. And then watching AD when he first came in and everything, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm on the team with them. And then not to mention Russ and Pat Bev, you know, gaining chemistry with Russ before in Washington. And then, you know, knowing Pat Bev is an NBA vet that's been to the that's been there before, you know, been around the block and learning from him. Like, I love that genuine time that I had there. So it was just like it was never in a point of like requesting a trade. All I did was ask Rob, like, you know, what do you see about me, you know, playing or anything in the near future? You know, you don't really see any playing time for you. Mm. And Denver, they said, like, look, we'll ask around Denver. Denver said, well, we want him. We'll trade for him. And that's what happened. And that's how I ended up with Denver. Okay. And it was a crazy transition like that because, you know, I didn't I didn't think I was going to get traded, but I did. So it was just, hey, I took it for what it was. But, it, it, you know, for me, as of right now, I see it as a blessing in disguise. So what was it like for you walking to that Nuggets locker room for the first time, seeing those guys from playing against them and now you playing with these dudes, knowing you're going to the top team in the West – they're probably the only one of few teams in the league with a legitimate chance to win the chip. You know, it was it was really great. You know, everybody was, you know, very welcoming. And that's what really surprised me, you know, with, you know, a team just like that, with that caliber and everything. And they and they all welcomed me. It was it was real good. And they just told me everyone told me like, hey, one way or another, you're gonna be a part of helping us win in this championship that we're on, that we're trying to get to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, having that embrace from those guys, especially, you know, my first day there. You know, it really felt good because it just made me feel a part of the team, especially coming from a team, you know, that we just played them and everything. And, you know, we were the enemy. Now I'm going to, you know, being teammates and riding with these guys. What was it like day in and day out watching like Joker dominate throughout the playoffs? I mean, it was one of the more dominating, more dominant playoff runs from a player I've seen. You know, I haven't no, really seen like something like that since like – Brian and you know against the Warriors, you feel what I'm saying? Like yes. it's been a while. It's like you know, uh, how, how how did you feel watching that? You know, I, it was amazing to watch it because you know just seeing Joker's work ethic, like his work ethic is amazing, unbelievable. Like 
he does his repetition throughout day, day in, day in, day out, day out. And I take pride in that as well. So seeing him do that day in and day out was like really a compliment to his game as well. Because, you know, he's he's really a person that's going to be, you know, trying to cross his T's and dot his I's. And mm-hmm. I respect that so much from a player like that. And for him to be the superstar caliber player that he is and to always grind like he's the 15th man on the like, a, you know, coming off of a two way or just signing on to the team and everything. The way he works is just like it's very unbelievable. And I respect the hell out of it. And you see how it translated into the playoffs right there and there. This episode is brought to you by Pepperoni, the original beef flavored dog treats made for your most valuable pup. And look, the NBA offseason is in full swing with trades and signings happening nonstop. And while your dog can't enjoy the excitement of the offseason, you can inject that same excitement into their life by feeding them irresistible pepperoni treats. As you know, crumbs might be addicted to these treats. Once crumbs hears the crinkle of a bag and those beef rounds or beef sticks, he gets just as excited as NBA Twitter when they fire up the trade machine or when they see a cryptic emoji from an NBA player. It's going to get crazy this NBA free agency, so bring more to the table than belly rubs and be your best friend's best friend for the playoffs by getting them some pepperoni treats. To learn more about pepperoni original beef flavor snacks, go to pepperoni. Dot com. That's P U P P E R O N I dot com. I got to ask so you obviously have practiced with Anthony Davis and Joker. Is there one that you feel like you've learned more from practicing with? Does that make sense? That, that like just getting touches with them in practice that you kind of like left like, oh, fuck, like there are some things I picked up from my game. Is there one or are there things from both that you feel like you've grabbed things from? Pretty unique for you to get to pre- like play with two aliens. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. I think for me is the taking away from both both of the guys' work ethics from being around AD, LeBron, and Yoke mm-hmm. is like the work ethics that they put in, the attention to detail that they have, and then also just simplifying the game. Like mm-hmm. some people try to how they say like reinvent the wheel. Guys just like that like that. It's just learning the game the right way. And that way your basketball IQ shoots up with that. And then, you know, having, you know, playing with God given talented players that work so hard at their craft as well, just makes it so much easier for guys all around them. So we talked about the generational playoff run from Joker, but I want to know for you, you know, playing with him, playing against him as a defender, how do you try and stop Joker from cooking you? You better hope he just missed. <laughs> that, man said, Pray. that man said, have you met our Lord and Savior? <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, you know, I, I remember years back when I was guarding Yoke, and it was, he was shooting those off-balance shots. It should just make it. The coaches was like, you got to contest it. You got to hit. I'm like, yo, what do you want someone to do with that? Like, yeah. <laughs> He's shooting the same leg, same foot, off-balance. And it's like, you know, some of those shots and some of those things he does is just like, you just have to live with it. As a player, like, you know, how do y'all feel about, you know, we, we argue all the time who's the best player in the world as, like, fans of the game, right? And uh, me watching it, I'm like, to me, I mean, I don't I, I don't think this is as recency bias, you know I mean? I think, you know, Giannis is a hell of a player. But mm-hmm. Joker's the best player in the world to me. Uh, did you think officially he's the best player in the world or do a lot, a lot of players lean in that way too? Or do y'all even think of the game that way? <laughs> for me, so for me personally, I – I'm the type of person to say appreciate greatness. Yeah. I'm not going to put you against anybody or anything like that, you know, but as my teammate, I do feel like he is the best player Mm -hmm. because of just what he did in that playoff run, how he carried the team and, you know, what he did was absolutely amazing. So I feel as for right now, going, going into last year and the last, I feel like the last two years, two to three years, probably he's been the best player in the world. So you got you got Joker as the best player in the world. There's been some speculation am- amongst the NBA delegation that that Joker and Jamal Murray are the best duo in the league. Would you agree with that assessment? And how long do you think that they can hold that title as the best duo in the league? Uh, man, I think they're probably the best duo in the league, if not top three, top two. <laughs> you know, their chemistry that they have together when they play is is like on point. And I feel like, you know, they can keep doing it as long as they can. Both of them are very young. You know, they're still very still very young. 
super talented and they know how to work with each other. They've done this for years, so it's finally clicking together. So I don't see it falling. Now, you don't seem like someone that would necessarily do this, but after that Lakers series, you guys obviously advance. Was there any temptation in your mind to just like maybe go back to the old Lakers team group text and just like like one random message? <laughs> or like do just something. Just something to no, like I'm, stir the pot a little bit. No, nothing. I get it. Man, I, I, want, I, I wanted to step foot in the locker room, man. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Go dance with the logo. Text. I want to go in the locker room. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Still all love for my boys, of though. Course, oh, love for sure. oh, of course. Of course. We were told that Michael Malone does not like to be referred to as Mike. Is that true? And why? You know, that's, is he spoken to that? I know you referred to him as Mike earlier. Maybe it's just because we don't know him. Don't call me Michael. We ain't homies. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Don't call me Mike. We ain't homies. But, you know, have you heard about that? No, I haven't. I haven't heard about that. You know, some of the guys, some of the guys on the team call him Mike. Okay. So okay. it's like, I haven't, I haven't really heard about that one. Maybe maybe it's for the people that, that he doesn't really know. Yeah. 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 It might have been fake news, too. You never yeah. know. You know what I mean? <laughs> So we talked about you faced the Lakers, Western Conference Finals. Uh, you know, Nuggets defeated them in the minimum amount of games needed to advance. I'm not going to say the S word out of respect you know, for this show and our fans. But with the Western Conference Finals, minimum games required. With the Western Conference Finals played out differently if you were still on the Lakers? <laughs> uh, for me personally, for me personally, absolutely. I feel like it would have. <laughs> That's, Absolutely, I we like needed you, dog. Uh, we needed you. That's all we're yeah, getting to. We I needed agree. you. I'm not saying that we would have won, or you know, if not gotten swept or anything. But I feel like you know, just for me, you know, just knowing how I played with those guys over there, and knowing how we locked into to you know to keep to key teams and key players, and knowing that we've beat them before, like I feel like we we could like if I was on that team, so we could have really like. You know, stir the pot a little bit. Y'all were the best team in the league, in, in, well, at least in the Western Conference for virtually the entire year. You know, the entire season. But Mike, Michael, Mike, can I call him Mike? I, I, I'll call him Michael. <laughs> just, y'all won't get nobody in trouble. Uh, Michael Malone had y'all. You know, he was talking about y'all being underrated and underdogs and things like that and overlooked. I mean, did y'all truly believe that coming into the playoffs? Like that, that, that folks was looking past y'all, even though y'all were the number one team in the West. And been dominant throughout the year. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Guys really had that chip on their shoulder because it was just like, you know, these analysis and these guys are tell, talking about other teams are projected to, you know, to win this and win that or be the best team in the playoffs or projected to do this and you know, see a highlights of other teams and other players when it was just like, hey, we number one in the West. Like, yeah, we might be the Denver Nuggets. We might not be like you know, as showy and flashy, but like, yo, we nice. Like we got a pack of like, I remember talking about this with the guys. It was like, yo, we nice dog. We got a pack <laughs> of dogs over here. Like we, like we got, we the number one team in the West for a reason. And that was like, I think, especially for Jamal and Yoke, I think that was like the real big chip on their shoulder. Cause they just wanted that respect. They just really wanted that respect. I know Jamal did. Hmm. Everybody talks about watching y'all, how y'all kind of remind them of the Spurs, like the beginning. Like y'all got some, yes. y'all got some chips ahead of y'all. You feel me? Did y'all feel that way? It seemed like, you know, y'all were four seconds into winning the championship before Michael was like, yo, we got another one coming. Did y'all, did y'all feel that way? You know, we always had the confidence to feel like we could win the championship, but we would never jump ahead to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, for just, sure, for sure. Uh, and it was good because our vets kept us real grounded. Our vets like, you know, Jeff, DeAndre, Ish, uh, Reggie, KCP, who won one with the Lakers and everything. Yeah. They really kept us grounded as a whole, just like, you know, taking it one game, game by game, game by game, series by series. Never never setting our goals way too high or too low, just stay even killed throughout all of it. You know, guys have been there. You know, it was great to have KCP who, who knows that feeling. You know, so leading on him, you know, everybody linked on him a little bit. That really helped because he was there. He's been there. Jeff been there with the Cavs, and you know, throughout the time with the playoffs. You know, DJ, 
been there with the Clippers and everything throughout the mm-hmm. playoffs and everything. So, you know, having those key guys with us really helped everybody to just stay grounded through everything. So who's the most powerful voice in that locker room? You mentioned a lot of those vets, but who who's the guy who was running things in those locker room? Who, who, who had the kind of loudest voice amongst that crew? I'd probably say DJ, DeAndre Jordan, because, you know, DeAndre Jordan and Jeff, because Jeff, everybody respected Jeff for how he, you know, how he moves, always very professional guy from around the way and also, you know, went through adversity throughout his time as well, but came back, you know, so he didn't speak too much, but when he spoke, everybody listened. And with DJ, DJ was a really great vet for, you know, giving everybody motivation, sending key texts in a group chat, talking about like, you know, stay high, fellas, yo, let's keep working, let's keep going, let's keep going. Giving each other, you know, a motivational speech just before games and everything like that. Being the vet that you can always talk to about anything. You know, if a guy seemed down, he'll go over there and be like, hey, hey come here, let me talk to you, bro. You know, come on, let's, you know, let's talk a little bit. Let's, let's hash it out, let's talk. How you feeling? Anything like that. So I think those two guys were the real big, like, voices for us, especially throughout the playoffs. I, I grew up in L.A. I'm a Lakers mm-hmm. fan. I have a lot of L.A. questions I want to ask you. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, 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 <laughs> I, I first, I got to know, how did it feel to sort of have a meme moment this year when you're calling for the ball under the hoop with LeBron on that shot? How did it feel being involved in that and then also being involved in that meme? What was sort of your personal reaction to that? You know, so it was funny. Every time we run a play like that, it brought, it brought always told me, if you ever had a mismatch down there, call for the damn ball. Get your ass to the post. <laughs> Get your ass to the post, call for the ball. <laughs> so LeBron told but you to do that down there. But at that time, yeah, I'm thinking like, all right, I got the mismatch. All right, let me get in the post right here. <laughs> and then he shoots it. I'm not realizing it's like, oh, shoot. Oh, wait, this might be the shot. Because I'm losing count in my head. I'm like, dang, I'm trying to get the lead back, trying to remember this, trying to get that and everything. And he shoots it. I'm like, I swear to God, if he missed this, go go right back out to his ass. <laughs> and then he shoots it. I'm like, all right, thank God he made it. <laughs> So you say you had the mismatch. If LeBron would have passed you that ball, was that going to be a bucket? Oh, for sure. Okay. This, oh, yeah. <laughs> he had food so, on him. He had food on him. It was a bucket either way. So we rolled. It was, was going to be an assist. It was going to be an assist for him or a bucket for him. <laughs> so I'd be like, Brian, you know you're going to break the record at some point. Go ahead and get this dime. Add to your, you know, get a little bit closer to the dime record. Do you have a favorite moment, like, or interaction with LeBron in your time in L.A.? I think one would be... Where I think it was, yeah, the Denver Nuggets game when we played Denver. And I had a great game and everything. And, you know, the fact that Braun and AD and those guys acknowledged me about it and everything was, like, really big. And the one where uh, we played uh, one of my one of the former teams that I was on, the Wizards, and he got hype over a dunk that I did. So I think that was one. I think that was one of the coolest moments that I was like, yeah, that's that's tough, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> he he's such a like a high IQ player. Like, did he ever teach you or give you any lessons about the game that you kind of will keep with you? Really, the lessons that he always he always did things by example. So he never really had to speak about things. It's just like if you watch closely of what he does and his repetition and the things that he does day in and day out, you start to like pick up on it, and then you know guys start to do it more and more often and everything. You know, just with him, he's just a machine. Like, when, like, there's a reason why he's been in the league for 20 years and he takes he takes care of his body. He does what he needs to do. He does the proper things that really, like, might seem lame, mm. but really go a long way. Like, you know, think about it. This is year 20 for this guy. He's still playing, like, magnificent. Like, it's just like he's, like, he was his first couple years on the Cavs. Like, it's amazing of what he can do out there. And I think it was, like, that kind of stuff, especially that really went down to the young guys as well. Do, do you find guys that are like, like, hey, Bron, do you have, like, a hyperbaric chamber guy? Like, hey, Bron, like, <laughs> guys trying to be like, put me on with some of these. Because he has these medical, these, Give me one for the low, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, <laughs> do you find guys like, where do I order one of those from? Like, hey, Bron, going to help you, but he ain't going to give you all his tricks, though. <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> 
good answer. Good answer. We ain't getting younger and younger. I got to keep up with these young guys. I can't give you everything. Uh, got to respect it. Got to respect it. I'm like, hey, you got to be. You got to be. <laughs> yeah, you, you played, you know, you obviously had uh, an early stint at the very beginning of your career with the Lakers and then a second one. And obviously earlier you were speaking very glowingly about being a Lakers fan or not Lakers fan, but growing up watching Kobe and then Braun and AD. Is it a little bit like, would you entertain returning to LA at some point or just, you know, twice and kind of, I imagine there's a lot of, uh, outside pressure that comes in as being a Laker. Are you kind of like, you know, I'm all right. Uh, you know, two tours with the Lakers is enough. Well, what's sort of your kind of take now being, you know, uh, outside and, and all that? Uh, for me, I'm always have love for Lakers land. You know, I'm always going to have love because this is a team that, you know, I was with my first year in the league. Like I'm always, it's always going to hold a dear place for me because it's where, it's where it all started. And then also I got to be able to play one of the best players of all time here as well. So it's like, you got key memories here. Like this is where I train at and everything. I got friends and family that come out here and everything. So, you know, it's, it's never, I wouldn't say like a non possibility or anything like that. It's just whatever it happens, whatever happens might happen. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. yeah. anything on that end. You know, I wouldn't mm -hmm. decline. I wouldn't decline anything. But yeah. I'm not accepting anything as of right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's bad, oh, Rob. Right, right. Run me. <laughs> Run me my bag, Bobby. Run P. me mine. <laughs> uh, now, these guys, I don't know if they forgot. I didn't. You won a title with the Lakers in the Summer League, right? Now you counts. Yeah, part it of, counts. It counts. It, counts. <laughs> it does count. Mm -hmm. You're part of. It, you know, it was a, it was a very fun roster because I remember as a fan being like, "Dude, this young core is awesome." You, Lonzo, Bi, Kuz, Josh Hart. Are you still? Is there still a little group text with those guys? Do you stay in touch with them, or was it kind of like all of you kind of had sort of been on the move ever since then? Yeah, it's, this guy's been on the move ever since then. You know, uh, we tried to keep in touch a little bit here and there. You know, uh, I had a little stint in uh, Washington with Cool, so it was good like, to have, you know, reunite with him there. And, you know, really, it's just hard to really keep in touch with guys and everything. You know, for me, whenever I see the guys, I always say what's up to them. I always say how you doing and everything, especially with B.I., Larry Nance, Julius, you know, Cools and everything. You know, so I, I still try to keep in touch with guys and, you know, see them when I can. So just talking about what your time with the Lakers, man, a lot of guys can't handle playing under the bright lights, playing in Hollywood, just just all the famous faces sitting courtside. So for you, what was like your first like starstruck moment or celebrity sighting you saw during the game? Oh, man. Oh, it's so hard to say which game because, you know, in a lot of the games, you just, you know, you might see like you, you see Floyd Mayweather, the next thing you know, you'll see Lil hmm. Wayne at a game. Right. And then you might see Adele and, and, and Cliff Wall. And like, yeah. it's like, yo, oh my God. <laughs> and then you look over, you're just like, did I just, did I just walk by Adele? <laughs> like, you know, then you see like, you know, famous actors and rappers and guys that you see, like, and hear about. Like, I remember one time we saw a little baby at the game and I was like, Yo, this is crazy. Right? Like, <laughs> so I got to talk about one of the crazier moments from the Lakers season. Uh, Shannon Sharp came through in the blue cardigan, got into it with the T. Moran <laughs> in the Grizzly squad. So I want to know, it happened during halftime, but did, when did y'all find out about that? Did y'all know it was going down? Like, you know, like when did y'all hear about that whole situation? No, nah, so it was crazy. We knew it was getting like, they was talking back, back and forth because they was doing it for a little bit and we thought it was just like, all right, it's just competitive, competitive spirit and everything. But next thing you know, as soon as we go to the locker room, we waiting on guys like, yo, what's taking guys so long to get back here? And it's like, yo, nah, they about to try and fight. I'm like, yo, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, why escalate that quickly? <laughs> so, I mean, I know y'all are locked in, but I always wonder, like, well, you know, it's middle of the game. Y'all going to win that game, but middle of the game, like, man. wait, are dudes talking about that? Or are they focus on Darvin Ham's game plan? Is Darvin Ham like, yo, yo, we got to fuck that. We got to go back out and defend Hunt. That was crazy, though. Know? Because <laughs> guys went back out to defend Hunt, man. I was like, oh, shoot, all right, respect. Respect. <laughs> we was ready for whatever that night. But let, let's talk a little bit about your time with the Wizards. So you mentioned playing with Russell Westbrook. Westbrook obviously had a, a difficult time with Lakers fans, to say the least. Did, did solid with the team, but fans didn't really embrace him, get on board with him, which was tough for me to see. I'm a UCLA guy, LA guy, a Westbrook guy. 
But what is Russell Westbrook like just as a teammate and from a player perspective playing with him? What is that like for you? He's one of the most brilliant, accepting guys that I've ever played with. Always had the best attitude ever that you would ever think of. Like, you know, guys say like the attitude goes a long way. It does go a long way. And like, you know, with Russ, he's always coming in with a great attitude and he's always there for you. Like, say you need some shoes. Hey, I got, I got you some shoes tomorrow. He'll give you like four pairs of shoes. If you wear the same size as him, he'll give you the shoes off his feet. Wow. You're just like, hey, I got plenty. I got plenty of them here. You need shoes? Give them. <laughs> always right. looking out for guys. Always talking to them. And he's always trying to make the game so much more easier for anyone. Mm. Like, literally, when he say just run, I'll get you the ball. He'll get you that ball. <laughs> And he'll do it over and over and over and over and over again. Just <laughs> wanting to see you succeed. Mm-hmm. And that's that's something that's really big. That was really big for us at Washington, too. You you were McDonald's All-American and projected like top five pick, but then slipped a little bit in the draft and ended up being a second round pick. You know, how much did that motivate you to prove people wrong when that when in that situation? It motivated me a lot, you know, just you know, from having dreams and aspirations and expecting one thing, but then turning out to another. But it, was, it also gave, it just gave me just motivation. Like I didn't get sad or mad or, you know, of course I was mad and ups, a little upset about it, but it didn't cancel out the the variation of just like, all right, I just have to continue to keep working mm-hmm. because I know what I can do. I know what I can bring. And I just have to just keep working and eventually it's going to, it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. So I never lost that. I think it gave me more of a hunger and desire when that happened. Mm-hmm. But you didn't lose your confidence. You knew Never. you was it. Okay, Never. for sure. Mm-hmm. Are you still close with anyone from that McDonald's All American class? Are there guys? Is that is it not like that? Is it not kind of like the like? I I always wonder like, are guys close? Like, oh, we're in this. Like, we all made this, or is it a little bit like oh, it's a one day, one week kind of a thing? Yeah, it's like a one day, one week kind of event. <laughs> That's what I Good think. luck, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the next level. I don't know. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like that. <laughs> what, what's it like playing in that game, though? With with all those different guys, you got a lot of personalities. I imagine some egos too. Everybody's trying to gun for that top spot. They all think they're the man. Like, do y'all get along with each other? Or are people talking to each other? The locker room is basically like, look, dog, like. I'm right tired of you, so don't speak to me type of thing. Yeah, it was like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I'm higher weight, don't speak to me. We had our own yeah. stuff. <laughs> Everybody was on their own stuff. Of course, you had, like, guys that talked to each other and everything that were cool at yeah. the time and all that. Yeah. But overall, it was just like, man, forget you. <laughs> Y'all got to get you the ball for it. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. Right, right. That's why I, I watched that game and wonder because obviously people value points. But, you know what I mean, yeah. like, are guys trying to give the rock up? Or if you start mm-hmm. cooking too much, or they're like, no, nah, I can't give him the ball no more. I'm trying to get that MVP. <laughs> like, I, know you, I know you hot, but I need you to cool off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it'd be like that. Yeah, yeah, for be sure. surprised, man. <laughs> you got drafted by the Lakers. You made first team all G League that same year. What was sort of your welcome to the league moment? But if you could give me one from the G League and kind of when you maybe realize like, oh, like as you were cooking, guys, like, oh, I'm going to be moving back to the, the the league here in a minute. But what was your like in the league, welcome to the league moment? Uh, I think my welcome to the league moment was like towards the end of my rookie year. And uh, what was it? I forgot his whole name, but it was a guy who used to play for the Rockets in Bahamuta. And he dunked on me crazy with the left. Yeah, <laughs> popped okay. his shoulder out, popped his shoulder out, and everything. I was like, God, <laughs> <laughs> Luke Richard, you already know. Oh, man, I think that was one, and another one was when I had to guard AD when he was in New Orleans, and I was like, Yeah, Damn. I was like, Yeah, that was a welcome to the NBA moment right there. <laughs> what What's the night, or what's rather the day of walkthrough like when you know you're going to have to defend Anthony Davis that evening? New Orleans Especially Anthony your, Davis, like, too. That was a... Yeah. He might have put 50 on you. You know what I'm saying? Like It was like 40. <laughs> Are you, Are you 40? Yeah. I think it was damn near something like that, boy. I was just speaking, you know. <laughs> I didn't know. That's in generalities. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, generalities, yeah. Because oh, hey, at man. first, I didn't think I was going to play. I didn't know I was going to play. Yeah, And yeah. they told me right then and there, and then I was like, oh, shoot, all right. 
So all right, so we all try to plan out for what he gonna do and everything, but it was just like we couldn't really plan for it. No, it was just like guys that created right there and there. So I had to help there, and now AD just had a space. He just had space to operate. We asked uh, Zubat the same question because he he was telling us about when he had to go against. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Dwight Howard. It was Dwight. Just it how, was Dwight. Yeah. How like sweaty his hands were holding the scouting report. That whole yeah. day, just like staring at it, and they're like, "Bro, it, it, it the, what's gonna save you is not on that sheet, you know." Like, man, <laughs> so you just hope you'd be having to hope that day. Be like, "Yo, hope he had a half day." Or like, yo, is he injured today? He not playing today? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. But for me, it was just like that was that one. But I, I love playing against guys like that though, because it's like, yo, that's that's them. They say that's him. He that guy. I right, bet. Let me see where I'm at with him. Let me see where I'm at with him and everything. So it's like I enjoy I enjoy going against like, you know, top guys like that. So you were a free agent this offseason. Do you run a running back? Are we are we gonna see you on the Nuggets next year? Is that what you're thinking? Uh I mean to be honest, it's just it's just whatever happens in free agency, you know. Uh you know, whether they, whether they see fit for me or another team sees fit for me, you know, it's, it's no I'm not promising anything, but it's also just like, you know, just keeping my options open just for myself. Yeah, you see, that's bag talk, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a business. That's it's a business. Media training, I, I respect it. A plus, but, I love, yeah. I love, plus. Hey, but I love to see it. Love to see it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we let you go, I, I got to ask, like, you obviously, you know, did the G League, you know, Competed in summer league, did G League, came into the league, you know, left the Lakers, went to Washington. Do you have any advice to some of these guys? Like, you know, draft just happened. Summer league's just about to get started. Is there any advice kind of you have to some of these guys, young guys that are, you know, going to have to go through, go the G League route or anything like that? Yeah, anything that I would say, like, don't ever take the G League route as a devotion. Yeah. Take it as, like, take it seriously and go out there to, you know, to actually work. Because I know guys, I've been down there in the G League, and I know guys down there that look at that no rosters, look down on, on them every day, just seeing like, all right, who gonna be down here? Who gonna be down here? And they see your name, they gonna circle your name. Best believe they they gonna come after you. The mm. G League got dogs, man. Facts. So it's like take it seriously. Don't go out there trying to be cool or anything like that. You know, coaches hate cool players, and you know, guys that want to win hate cool players. I'm not looking for that, you know, and go out there, take it seriously, go out there and do what you have to do in order to get to the other roster, figure out what you have to do in order to get to that next level and go out there and produce that. That goes a long way. So talking about free agency, we got to talk about another one of your former teammates who's also in hot pursuit of a bag, uh, Austin Reeves. So <laughs> kind of, you know, undrafted, <laughs> uh, you know, so if I had to ask you, describe Austin Reeves' game with one word, what word, word would you use to describe Austin Reeves' game? One word, I could just... You can make it two. It's all good. <laughs> a skilled killer. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's Man, real I, good. It's crazy because people just now seeing what Austin could do, like put it on the floor, shoot that thing and everything, get to his spots to get to the rim. I've seen that throughout the whole time and throughout the summer playing with him and against him. I was like, yo, Austin's nice. <laughs> A-Rod's nice, man. He could play. And I'm just, I'm ha- I'm genuinely happy for him because he just getting to showcase what he do, man. And that's, that's just very happy for me to just see one of my, one of my boys just do it, man. Who, I mean, he, he looks and reminds me of like Billy Ho from White Man Can't Jump, kind of. Yeah, that's crazy. Decept- that's true. But deceptive. <laughs> he pull up. He pull up, and you know we're not gonna give him that respect yet. So I want to know: was there a moment when you were playing with him, summer pickup or a game, when you saw him do something, you lo- you was like, all right, this dude's gonna be all right in the league. Oh yeah, they tried to rough him up one time when we was playing the summer in the summertime. They tried to follow him a few times. He was like, he kept talking, like they was talking to him, and he was talking back at him. He was like, nah, I'm about that. I'm about this. I was like, with the shit. Stop playing with me. I can get down with it. I was like, I saw, I was like, and he went out there and did it too. I was like, yeah. Come on, now, AI straight, bro. That's <laughs> AI great. straight, dog. That's so great. There's a lot of good bigs in the league. Is there a, a, a big like that where, like, people don't know this dude is really nice? You know what I'm saying? And the people aren't really talking about him. Me. 
Hey! <laughs> right, we can put the stamp on the show right there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we we seen it. It. no, no, talk your we shit. Seen talk it. your shit. Talk your shit. We seen it. <laughs> talk, yeah, yeah. We seen it. I remember the 31 piece this season. I'm like, yeah, Facts. please let that man Facts. cook. Facts. We was hurt when you shook. That's like your For fans. He was like, come on, man. But yeah, yeah. I think Jonathan Kabanga, Jonathan Kabanga from, from Go to State, he's like that. I feel like he's really good. There's a young guy that's that's on Denver named Peyton Watson. Very Ooh, athletic. Long Beach, hey, Long Beach, Long Beach, Long Beach, Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Pete Watt can play. Yeah. I'm P-Y excited for play. him, man. I'm, Me too. And then so also talk- my man. Also my man, Jay Pickett, that just got drafted to the to the different Nuggets. For sure. So talking about the draft, obviously you got to talk about Wimby coming through. Seems like he's one of the most high players since Zion, since LeBron. In a cool minute. As a big man knowing that you're going to have to face him at some point this season, are y'all getting excited about just the opportunity to cook this dude? Is it more motivation to like, oh, I'm about to go get this dude buckets, man. Like, you, you know, you, you come into the league, young fella, and you're a young but We're going to show you what this NBA is really about. Oh, yeah, of course that. But it's also seeing, like, another young, talented kid, and they project all this hype. But it's like, y'all want to see it there. Mm. Like, of course we're going to go at him. But it's also like, come at us, too. It's like... We want to see what this. We want to see if you bought this, bro. Let's yeah. see if you, you know, got some wiggle to you. That's awesome. All right, Thomas, man. Appreciate you tapping in with us. It was a ball, G. You know, we could have left it with it just being you. You don't have to, you know, what I'm saying. Been, hey, you feel me? I could have yeah. put the stamp on the show. You feel me? But thank you. We really appreciate you, man. Seriously, thank man, you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for giving me the time. I, I do. I do want to ask before we go out. Which what finger are you gonna get the ring for? Have you figured that out Probably yet? Probably do it on this one. This my this the biggest finger I got. So yeah. right, right, I'm gonna right, cherish right, this go, one. Middle right. finger waving around LA with right. the window out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Vibes. That's the vibes. You feel me? I like to wear the drop top. Oh, here he go. He coming again. Oh, here he come. Yeah.